Hello and welcome. I'm your Geek Eric, and today we're going to take a Game Jam game that I made just over a year ago. It was actually my first Game Jam using Godot's 3D, and we're going to fix the bullet collision. Now, in that game, I was using collision based bullet physics and not using Raycast. And we're not going to use just Raycast in this tutorial either because I still want some bullet drop. And I also want a little bit of time before the bullet impacts. So follow along and let's figure out how I fix it. So linked in the description box down below, you will find the GitHub repo for this tutorial. And all you gotta do is come over here to the code button and you could either clone the project. And if you're not familiar with Git, you could download the zip file. After downloading it, we're going to extract it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop and then we're going to go in here and we're going to open the project in Godot. Okay. So first let's walk through how the project is now and then talk about the changes that we need to make. So currently you get the message on the screen, you wait for it to go away. Then you could start shooting at these plates, like at kind of like a carnival shooting gallery. And you get some score with that. You can then restart and do it again, or we could quit. But here's the thing. I wanted my bullets to go faster. I didn't want them to be raycast necessarily. I wanted to still see the object move, but I wanted them to be faster. So I was like, okay, all good. I just need to move up my bullet speed. But then this happened. The bullets, for the most part, just fly straight through the plates without dealing any damage. And trust me, we want to deal some damage. So the reason that happens, physics is calculated on the physics frame. And that frame, I think only happens like one in every 16 milliseconds or something like that. And basically, I said... This object is going to move a hundred meters a second. So between 60 and milliseconds is actually a pretty good distance. And my bullet can end up going from in front of the plate to behind the plate without colliding. So now you see my problem, but first we're going to add a little bit of bullet drop. And let's move in this bullet speed and put it where it only affects the, the forward movement. So now if we play the game again, we should be seeing a slight drop and I think we do. So let's move on to the next part. So next let's open up the bullet scene and let's change the node. So we're going to change the area node to a spatial node. And we're also going to take the graphics for the bullet and drag them outside the collision shape. And then we can delete the collision shape. Then let's make sure. Yep. That's still connected. So we need to come into this bullet script and we need to change area to spatial as well. Okay. Next let's, let's add a new physics layer. And we're going to want to, we're going to want to change the targets physics layer. So let's open up project, scroll down, 3d physics and on layer two, let's make a targets layer. And now let's move its layer and its mask just to layer two and save. Okay. Now let's go back to the bullet script and we need to add a couple more variables. So we're going to add in two new variables. We're going to add in a variable called bodies to exclude. And this will just be an option for if you need to pass in the players collision or maybe if your gun has collision on it you can pass in the gun collision. We're not going to pass anything to it. 
but I will have it here just in case uh, you need to for your project. And then we're also going to start storing the bullet's last known position. We're going to default it to, uh, to zero just to have it set to something. But next, we're going to come in here and we're going to, on ready, we're going to save the global transform of the bullet as its last position. And then let's make a new function called check kit. And what this function is going to do is we're going to, we're going to take the last position and we're going to raycast from the last position to the current position. And then if we get a hit, we're going to deal some damage and delete the bullet. But now let's go back and let's finish up this process function. But here's where we run into another problem of just me making a dumb mistake on an earlier project. I used the process function when I should have used the physics process. And basically the difference here is going to be the physics process should run the same on any computer where the process function, if you have a faster computer, could run more often or vice versa. If you know you go and run your game on a slower computer, it could run slower. And you don't want your bullets to move at different speeds depending on what computer they're on. That just sounds like a bad time. So then after we move the bullet, let's call our new check kit function. Let's pass in the bullet's last position. And then at the end of our physics update, let's go ahead, let's update the bullet's last position. Now we can go ahead and we can clean up this function since we're not using it anymore. And let's go ahead and finish out the check for hit. Our current position, and we're gonna raycast from the last position to the current position this is where we could pass in an array of physics bodies to exclude. We're not going to in this video, but if you need to, you can. Also, you're going to notice this two here. And what that two is for is we only want this raycast to collide with objects that are on the target layer. And then the last bit of the code, we're going to take the result and if the result's not null, if it's got something in there. And if what we collide with is in group boxes, which this was just a poor choice of name, I should have named it target. But if it's in group box, then we're gonna check to see if it has the method damaged. And then if it has the method damaged, we're gonna, we're gonna deal five points of damage. And then we're going to delete the bullet whenever the engine has a spare second to, to delete it. If you want to delete it immediately, you could call free, but free can cause performance problems potentially. So we just want to queue free, which will call free whenever it gets a, a free frame to do some cleanup. And of course we, we're going to keep this timeout function so that after a little bit of time, if the bulletin has to hit anything, it will go ahead and free itself. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this again. I hope this works. <laughs> okay. So we're getting some hits, but we could already shoot targets at 20 at 20 meters per second. Let's, let's bump it a little bit. Let's try that hundred again. Nice. Okay, a hundred works, but let's, you know, let's, let's try, let's try a couple extra zeros just to, just to hammer home that this is, that this is working. Now, where would you want to use this method? Well, I would say you want to use this method when you want to have fast bullets and you want to have drop and maybe, maybe you're wanting to shoot it longer distances. I would I recommend this method. Up close, honestly, you can get away with 
ray casting with some particle effects. But as you stretch that distance and you want to have like some drop and some time delay, then this method would would be more preferred, I would think. Well, guys, if this video was helpful for you, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell. I'll be posting tutorials every month, and I'll also be posting updates to my devlog every month. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.